Hi guys, this is Augustin speaking for Platform.sh and today we'll see how to develop a Drupal 8 website from scratch on Platform.sh using only the Platform.sh CLI. First, we will use the experimental project create command to create a Platform.sh project and we wait for the bot to create our project. Alternatively, you can also use the Platform.sh UI to create your project. Okay, now that it is complete, we can finish the process directly from the web UI. And we select the Drupal 8 starter stack. Now our project is being initialized. And in the meantime, we can already clone the project locally using the project ID. This will also create our Drush aliases that are going to be very useful. And now we can run the platform build command to set up our local environment. This build command will download all our dependencies that are defined in our composer.json file and set up our local files properly. We will also create a local MySQL database so that we can run our site locally. And for that, I'm using SQL Pro but you can of course use any database management tool or CLI. Now it's time to open your favorite text editor so that we can edit the settings.local.php to fill in our newly created database access information. So you simply need to uncomment those lines. I recommend that you also add the hash salt to prevent Drupal installation process from overriding your setting.php like this, and the database information. Like that. Now our Drupal site is ready and we can proceed to the installation. Of course, we want to use Drush for that. The platform CLI allows you to run any Drush command to the remote environment. Here we are running the site install command which is done and if we refresh the site we see that Drupal is already installed and that we are good to start. Now we want to synchronize the remote database that we have just installed with our local database. For that we use the Drush SQL sync command and the aliases that have been automatically created for us which are master going to local Yes. This is done. So now if we access our local Drupal site, we should see the exact same state as we have in our remote environment, which is the case. Now let's see how we can deploy a configuration change. For example, we can update the site name on our local site using the config set drush command. Give it the name of your site. We see that the site name has been updated to our local site and we run the config export command which is going to export our local configuration and then we simply need to commit these configuration changes to git and push those changes again with git. This is going to automatically deploy those changes to the remote environment. And now if we refresh the remote environment, we should see that the site name has been automatically updated with our changes. Let's do some more changes to our site, for example, changing the default theme. We start by cloning the master environment into a new theme environment. And we will use this new theme environment to make and test our changes. This operation can take around 60 seconds, so we wait. And as soon as it is done, our local git branch will be automatically switched to the new theme branch and we can use composer the require command 
to download our new base theme. So that's very simple to download and fetch any contributed dependencies like themes, modules, libraries. Here in that case, uh, we will be using the bootstrap theme. Okay, that's done. Composer require. And this updates our composer.json file. We need to enable that new theme and set it to default again with the config set. And of course, we need to export the configuration. First, we can check that the local site is now properly using the new theme, which is fine. And we can export our local site configuration. And again, commit it to Git. And when we push to that branch, we should see that our new theme has been enabled and is now the default theme on our remote environment. You automatically get the environment URL here. And that is the case. Of course, you can see that the master environment has not been updated with our theme. We can again create another environment to build a second feature like enabling Drupal Commerce to our site. Here we use platform environment branch call it commerce. In that case, you see that I have first checked out the master environment so that I can clone that master environment to a new commerce environment. I don't want to clone the theme environment. I really wanted to clone the master environment, which is or can be our production environment. Again, I will use composer require to download all the Drupal commerce dependencies, including libraries, modules. Wait a little bit for the environment to be created and ready to use. This is done using Composer Require Drupal commerce. And when it's done, I enable the commerce modules and I export the configuration. Same process, I commit and push those changes so that it will automatically update our remote, newly created commerce site. And this is as simple as this. Finally, let's say that we are happy with one of our features, for example, the theme, and that we want to deploy it to production. We can use the merge command directly from the web UI, but let's continue directly with the terminal. You check out the theme branch and you use the platform environment merge command. This is going to merge the theme branch in the master branch and update the configuration automatically in the master site. This is basically how you deploy to production one of the changes that you have implemented. You wait for the deployment to complete and if you go to the master site, you should see that it now has our new theme. Thank you very much. Bye bye.